Okay, well, I'm still working with this proximity sensor project, and uh, it's been pretty interesting, but uh, slow. And uh, I just wanted to touch base with folks and let them know where I'm at with this thing. And, and like I say, it's it's a slow process, and I probably won't do much more on this, to tell you the truth. Um, one of the things I wanted to try was uh, no magnets on the rotor. And using the proximity sensor, if you use a piece of metal that is not magnetized like a steel nut the proximity sensor will pick that up and trigger the circuit and it worked quite nicely and i changed the coil this one has a ferrite core in it and then the in the circuit i added a pnp transistor where they called for just a switch right there and i didn't want to burn out this thing it can only handle about 300 milliamps and so i added a pnp transistor where it shows that switch Nothing else, just the PNP transistor to help take up the load. Now, the um, LED is um, put across the coil backwards and picks up the back spike when the thing shuts off. But, uh, yeah, what uh, is going on here is uh, the proximity sensor uh, doesn't require a magnet to activate. It just requires, on this particular one, a change in induction in um, the tank circuit. They change this and then they have a sensor circuit which is a Schmidt trigger and then that triggers the uh, device you want to trigger so any sort of change in induction and you can um, see the, the, the little thing going on when I do that. If you change the um, induction on this thing you can uh, activate it with uh, any, any metal object and that's what's going on with these steel nuts. They're not magnetic they're just steel and they're affected by a magnet so when I turn the electromagnet on with this the motor runs so what happens is, is this thing gets going by that steel nut get this a little closer there it goes when that light flashes, it means this sensor is picking up the steel nut and causing the circuit to trigger. And that's how this uh, inductive sensor is causing that coil to fire at the right time. It sees the steel nut and tells the circuit to turn on, which takes the energy from the battery, which is just a 3.7, through the electromagnet, electromagnetic magnet pulls on the nut. It pulls it and causes this rotation to happen. Um, I ran into a number of problems studying this thing, but then again I ran into some really, really interesting stuff I didn't know before. And um, the Schmidt trigger that they use in this, um, to me it looks like a comparator circuit where they have power going all the time and a plus minus, and they vary the plus minus to trigger off a, a transistor to cause the triggering to happen. Um, I didn't like it, to tell you the truth, because in these really, really small motors that I build that are microamp, you don't want power on all the time. You just want a little tiny bit of power just at the right time to turn the rotor around. You don't want any sort of power on all the time. So um, that was a little disappointing, but the basic oscillator circuit I tried dual thief circuits and stuff, and they were fine, but then I got into this Hartley oscillator, which um, I've built before, and it's just a simple RF transmitter circuit that I took some components and varied the components around and built up this little uh, blinker circuit that I started playing around with. And I added a super cap and a little solar panel. And this thing here, it's a one-third to two-thirds ratio on the coils right there and you can make it out of almost anything and um, there's five components to the whole thing and it's to me as simple as a jewel thief and um, you can tweak this down way into the microamp range if you're clever about it and I got this thing to work off of ambient sunlight and blink most of the night and I thought that was pretty darn neat. And this is what it sounds like with the radio. And like I say, it's an R a simple RF transmitter circuit. You can Google that simplest RF transmitter and find the circuit. I don't know who built it, how long old this is, but I had a lot of fun with just playing around with that. 
and um, this is a side project of this main project which was the proximity sensor project and it's just one of these examples of, as along the way of these projects you discover things and that's what I find most fun about this hobby is when you're actually building stuff and you're not just looking at a screen or playing around with something on paper you're actually building stuff you come up with these discoveries and um, just one of these things I wanted to share that uh, uh, it's fun when you're experimenting with these things and you find something you didn't know before thanks for watching